Welcome to my most boring video yet. I haven't made very many, so it's not a big race. But, aside from comments that I look like Jay Leno, a request for more information about my electrical system was high on the list. I didn't really want to make this video. I said I would, but I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm not an electrician. You know, I'm, this is an instructional video. This is what I did. And it's a mishmash of things I already had, and I bought some additional items. Um, I figured up today, if I would buy everything today that you're going to see, it would cost about $700. I spent about $400 because I already had several items. Um, I almost fell asleep making this video because I thought, well, what can I do? I don't have a lab. Um, my electronics are wedged behind my passenger seat in my Honda Odyssey. And uh, so what I came up with is I'm going to show a part and I'm going to explain using uh, voice and text how I installed that part. Now I'm going to go to the next part and everything I use to connect them together. Um, like I said, I don't have a lot of experience. I installed CBs in the 70s and car stereos in the 80s and alarm systems in the 90s. But... Um, you know, if, if, if you know as much as I do, you won't probably get much out of this video. Um, if you know more than I do, you will find it really boring. But a lot of people had questions how I managed to uh, power my stove and my microwave and my refrigerator and my bed heater and or my fans when it's hot and my lighting and my device charger all by driving about an hour a day. And this is how I do it. I started with a pair of two gauge jumper cables from Rural King. Uh, probably could have used one gauge if I'm going to run my stove and microwave both at the same time, but I don't usually do that. Uh, you have to cut the clamps off the ends and for that I used a hacksaw blade. It's any hacksaw blade will do. I didn't include one in the description. My dad would have used a steak knife back in the day. I needed to attach ring terminals to all four wire ends, but I do not have the proper crimping tool. And like my grandpa used to say, poor folks have poor ways. So instead of teaching you the wrong way, I have put a link to Will Prowse's video on how to properly do it in the description. I used a hammer, but don't be like me. Like all fathers and honest pastors, be better than me. But I used a hammer, that's what I had. It is not linked in the description. Once I ran my cable from the start battery into the van itself, I attached the ANL fuse on the end where the battery is. And this is a 150 amp fuse because I have a 130 amp alternator. I connected them using a bolt a lock nut and a couple washers. I don't have links to those because I went to the hardware store. You're also going to need a ratchet set uh, first to attach this, but uh, throughout the build, if you don't have one already, get one. No link. This is where I would expect keyboard commandos to chime in and tell me I can't. But for about 30 years now, I've been using modified sign inverters, mostly for power tools. But uh, I got this one for free. The price was right. It was a Christmas gift. And I think it's been so long that it's what Harbor Freight used to sell before they had their own. And uh, you can see on the front, you've got the two outlets for the appliances, a switched meter, and... Uh, reset buttons for the circuits and the power switch 
at the rear of the unit you can see the cooling fans you want to make sure to put this in a well ventilated area and most importantly you have your red positive terminal it says input positive and it has a plus sign and your black negative terminal and it has input neg and a minus sign if I just wanted to run my stove and microwave and power tools directly off the alternator, I would be finished. But wait, there's more. I need some wiring for my 12 volt appliances and I settled on 12 gauge. Here is a chart to let you determine what gauge to get based on the amperage and how far you're running. When measuring wire length, you have to measure from the battery to the fuse box and from the fuse box to whatever appliance you're powering. With the exception of the intercom wires that I used for the battery monitor slash meter, I crimped one of these types of connectors onto every wire from here on out, uh, even if I don't mention it. For example, I cut this inline fuse holder, stripped both ends, and uh, attached spade type horseshoe uh, connectors to both ends. I attached one end to the red positive side on the back of the inverter and the other end to the battery side of this whaley overrated circuit breaker but I use it only as a switch to turn on and off power to my Renogy 20 amp DC to DC charger. I have to read the manual to set the dip switches. I set them wrong the first time. And when I saw my voltage wasn't getting as high as it should be, then I realized that I was looking up was down and down was up. So I needed to take closer attention to that. On one side, you have the input from that breaker switch to the positive side. And the other input goes directly from the back of the inverter negative side to the negative side ground input side of the charger. There's also a jumper that I put in, the D plus wire runs from the little green square you see there on the front to whatever circuit you want to turn this on. When that circuit's hot, when the ignition switches on, for example, it uh, will turn this on. Well, this is a temporary for me slide in, so I use the switch to power it and it's always on. Now we're looking at the output side of the DC to DC charger. And we're going to connect that to the fuse box. I ran a wire from the negative post on the output side to the negative post of the fuse box, which is near the bus bar. You can see the two bus bars there at the top of the fuse box. The cover was off and there weren't any fuses in it so it wasn't like pictured. Then I ran a, another wire from the positive post of the DC to DC charger to the positive post of the fuse box which is below where the fuses would be. Next I wanted to connect a shunt for the battery monitor slash meter uh, to my AGM deep cycle battery. This is the battery monitor slash meter that I used. I just bolted the shunt to the negative battery terminal. Then I ran the four wires. They were, I think, 20 gauge intercom wire. I bought at Radio Shack in 1988. So there is no link in the description. It's no longer made, but you don't need very big wire at all. And you don't need connectors on the end of that wire. Next, I connected my battery to my fuse box. 
I ran the positive wire from the individual screw on the side of the fuse box beside whichever fuse I was going to use to the red terminal on the battery. Then I ran another wire from any random screw on the bus bar to the proper screw on the battery monitor slash meter shunt. Next, I wanted to install a deep well cigarette lighter outlet for my compressor fridge during the day. I leave it plugged in when driving or stopping temporarily in my regular cigarette outlet and run it off the alternator. But then when I stop for any length of time, I just unplug it from there and plug it into this. Notice the, the ends have different connectors on them. Um, positive wire from the screw on the side of the fuse box to the center connector on the cigarette outlet. Because that is the positive side. And then the negative wire from any open screw on the bus bar to the edge terminal of the outlet because that is where the negative side is. Next, I install on a power bank with USB and cigarette outlet ports, which are switched. I cut the end off of it. And using the same method I used on the jumper cables earlier, I removed the outer sheath. And then I stripped the wires um, with the crimping stripping tool and added the connectors. The blue wire was the negative on this one, so I attached that to a free screw on the bus bar and attach the positive brown wire to the individual screw for the fuse that I would be using. Since the aftermarket seat warmer I use to keep my bed heated, watch the complete video on that, is completely self-contained. All I had to do, once again, was connect the negative wire to the bus bar and the positive wire to whichever fuse I wanted to utilize. A couple accessories. I have a 12-volt fan with articulating heads that plugs into the uh, power block at night. During the day, I have a one pound folding solar panel that powers it, but that's another uh, video. I also have a USB battery charger, charges batteries for flashlights, a UV water purifier, um, radios, and also my fairy lights. I can't recommend them because half the Remote batteries were dead when I got them, but they were cheap. They're no longer available anyway, but they work. And I strung them through the grab handles and used clips on the heater vents in the middle of the van. 